Liberty Hill, living the Bible together through education, missions, and ministry. John chapter 8, verses 31 through 36, we find our text for this morning as we look into the Gospel of John for the first time during this series. The Gospel of John is a wonderful gospel that brings to us a real life situation for the believer. In the Synoptic Gospels, Matthew, Mark, and Luke, we find some of the same stories and things happening as they confirm with each other the text and the good news of Jesus Christ. However, John, on the other hand, takes uh, the same approach, but yet brings us some different kinds of things. We divide this particular gospel into two different parts. The first part is the signs, and the last part is the glory. The first part of this particular book, we can see the works and the actions of Christ. As a matter of fact, even if we did a linguistic study or a word study of this particular book, we would find in the Greek that more often than any other gospel, this particular gospel uses this word zoe, life. It uses the word uh, that we find with photograph and with uh, uh, light. When we talk about photos, it uses the word light. It brings light to life, this gospel. This gospel wants us to see the work of Christ so that we might recognize that even as new immortals that there is a blessing when we're connected with the power and presence of God. And so in this text we find out that even in our weakness there is strength because of who God is. He is not only our creator, he is also our deliverer, but not only our deliverer, Brother Crawford, he is also our Savior. He allowed himself to be clothed in the humanness of a human body and he walked here on earth to show us the example that one can change the lives of many. Yes. And so the book of John brings forth in its very beginning, in its prologue, this idea that the temple can be cleansed for the use of the Holy Spirit even in the outset of ministry. There are some who believe that we have to wait on God, but we don't need to wait anymore because he's already sent the sacrifice. Yeah. The Christ, the Messiah, the good news has come. And so if we sit in our depression, if we sit in our depravity and say it's just me, woe is me, sad life, sad uh, existence, let me tell you, you need to wake up and recognize yeah. that Jesus has died, he was buried, and is now resurrected. With that hope and faith, we know that he shall come again. But until then, the writer says this in Philippians, he says that we may know him in the fellowship of his suffering, but we must also know him in the power of his resurrection. And so therefore, life does come with some challenges, and yet with those challenges, we must be willing to allow God to lead us and guide us beyond the challenge, yeah. beyond the valley, and toward a mountain whereby we might be able to praise and worship Him forever. And so in the book of John, chapter 8, we find some words that I feel are fitting for this day in order for us to understand the benefits of discipleship. You know, anytime you go and buy something, Sister Cordell, you always want to know what is the benefit of my purchase. If you get a membership, whether it be a Sam's Club or a Costco, Brother Saunders, you always want to know what are the benefits of my membership. If I call Sister Jasmine and I want some insurance, I want to know what are the benefits of this particular policy. There are benefits with membership. And so we want to know what are the benefits. I've told you uh, day in and day out for the last few weeks we've talked about discipleship and how to be a disciple. And so the question is what are the benefits of being a disciple? What, what are the benefits of following Christ Jesus? Well, number one, look at verse 31 of chapter 8. You'll find uh, there these words. And Jesus said unto those Jews which believed on him, If you continue in my word, then ye are my disciples indeed. Well, you recognize training is available. Training is available. And sometimes you wonder why uh, these people who open franchises, whether it be Wendy's or McDonald's, they open these different places and they pay somebody to lead them and guide them in business, and you wonder why do they pay them. They pay them because they recognize in a relationship with a larger company that knows what it's doing, they have a greater chance of success. 
because they pay a particular fee, that means that they're always able to get some customer service. Customer service is important, and maybe uh, you haven't had problems with your cable or your internet lately, but I have. And when you have problems with your cable and your internet, you begin to realize how important customer service really is. I was so frustrated this last uh, couple of days, I finally called them and I reached a voice that sounded foreign to those that I'm used to, and someone on the other line told me that they could help me. The more we discussed the help, it seemed the, le the, the least amount of help I could get was provided. I, I asked them could they reduce uh, the services since the, the services were not being provided that I thought I should have. <coughs> I told them that my internet was running slow. I said, well, go on the internet and tell me, go to this website and you tell me how fast things are going. I said, well, they say that I'm getting 15. She said, well, we only sold you 12. So therefore, you're getting more than we sold you to start with. Everything is going fine. I said, well, lady, maybe the numbers are right, but it just seems like the, the internet is still moving slow no matter what the numbers say. Well, I'm sorry, sir. Everything is running well. It must be your equipment. I said, well, you know what? If I'm going to get lousy service, then I tell you what, I'd like to pay for lousy service. Instead of selling me 12, what happens if you sell me the lowest? So she says to me that they could sell me the lowest. They would take me from the, the, the 12 that they were selling me all the way down to 6. I said, well, then why are you had to cut down some of my channels, too? I don't need all of these channels. As a matter of fact, take me down to the local stations and just give me the HD package. She said, very well. And so when she finished, she told me, she said, well, here's what it's going to cost. And it was still over $100. I said, how can I still, how would I pay over $100 for local channels and the lowest internet service when right now I'm only paying a little over 100 so you say, even though you charge me uh, for $200 each month? She says, well, we only provide packages to new customers. I said, so the old customers are not valued? She said, I'm so sorry. I guess you'll have to leave us and come back. I said, well, I tell you what, that'll be sufficient. Just go ahead and transfer me so that I can disconnect the service. She said, very well, write down the number because you might get cut off. And so I wrote down the number and then she transferred me to the customer service so that I could disconnect the service. And as soon, Brother Daniel Fisher, as I got to that line, it rang for a minute, then I heard the wonderful music, Sister Smith. And then after the music played, I heard this voice come on, welcome to AT&T customer service. Unfortunately, our offices are now closed. <laughs> And so I began to realize that there is a problem with customer service. Sometimes uh, when you want to add service, they happen to find you. But when you want to cut off service, they closed after five and they'll see you on Monday. Don't call us on the weekend, don't call us after hours, don't call us before eight. And so in this world, I find that customer service is hard to find. I bet if I were to take a, a survey in this room today, most of you don't like automated voices on the phone because they send you from press one to press four to press five to press six and unfortunately we're about to hang up or terminate the call if there's nothing else we can help you with. Well, you never helped me in the first place. And, and so is there a number to press if I'm really mad? As a matter of fact, I'm not only mad, I'm mad with about five expletives behind it. And so customer service is hard to find these days. But the wonderful thing is that with God, He's got a 24 hour hotline. Amen. With God, I don't have to pay for the service because the blood of Christ has already paid for my connection. There's an old song that we used to sing in the church. It was, Jesus is on the main line. Tell him what you want. Just call him up and tell him what you want. And unlike the cell phone companies and the cable companies and the internet companies, the bill arrives and it has all of these miscellaneous charges. When the bill arrives from heaven, it says, Jesus paid it all. And so the beauty of discipleship with him is that he continually and constantly allows us to come to him in order to receive instruction and training and teaching. The Lord is always there. He's always there to see us through. He's always there to allow us to be taught even more. And so all to be taught by Christ. For he says if we continue in the word. 
text says that if we study to show ourselves approved, if we stay in our Bible, if we stay in the presence of the Holy Spirit, He will teach us and lead us and guide us. The Word becomes sweeter and sweeter every day. A disconnect from the Word, I can tell you through testimony that a disconnect from the Word is a disconnect from true and real life. Without our word, we cannot live, we cannot move, we cannot do anything that is prosperous and anything that is successful. Look at verse 31. Not only does it say here, not only does he say, if you continue in my word, he says, then are you my disciples indeed. The training is available. You can be taught by Christ, but then it also brings assurance. When you're with Christ, it brings a type of assurance. You know, sometimes we go into life uh, feeling very inadequate about things. Sometimes we go into life and we begin to get depressed because we're not sure where we stand. <laughs> When we develop ourselves in His presence and allow His Word to be in us, it, a, it gives us a kind of assurance that we can't have otherwise. You know, it gives us the assurance that ultimately I will get out of the valley. Yes. It gives us the assurance that I will get out of my situation. It gives us the assurance that I might not be in the midnight hour now, but morning shall come. Yes. As I said before, this book, this book of John, this gospel is about light. This gospel is about the light coming to life. This gospel is about the revelation of Jesus Christ coming to our life to bring us light, to bring us joy, to bring us peace. This gospel, a gospel that says to us that there is hope. And so no matter what you're going through and no matter where life has brought you, there is yet hope. I can certainly attest that the last few days, the months, the years have come to me and it seems that as I get older, I feel the pressures of life. And as I feel those pressures, there are times when I reflect on things and I begin to wonder and it seems that the enemy attacks. Even though I recognize that there have been times when I've had to dodge the darts of the demons, I still recognize that ultimately life will emerge with great blessing and joy, not because of who I am, but because of whose I am. Yeah. It is all because I recognize that, yes, I do know him in the fellowship of his suffering, and life does come with those moments where it seems that life is more than it's worth. It seems that the struggles have become strong, and yet if we would hold on to a God who loves us, we know the power also of his resurrection. It brings us assurance that even when the lights are off, that the lights shall come back on again. Don't close the book. You might not see it today, but the Lord will turn the lights back on again. Just wait on him, and he will direct your path. Not only does it bring us assurance because he says there in 31 that we are his disciples indeed when we're in his word, it also, verse 32 says, and ye shall know the truth. It also brings the truth. Truth is important. The truth is life. The truth is something very important to us because if you walk in that which is false, you will recognize that ultimately the perception will bring you to death. It is the truth that we need. It is the truth that we desire. It is the truth of Jesus Christ that leads us toward life. So it brings us truth. And you say, well, why is the truth so important? Let me tell you that the truth is very important. We must know it. We must have a full sense of who God is. And the truth is oftentimes something that we struggle with as humans. We psych ourselves out. We psych others out. We lie a lot. This culture is a lying culture. The culture is full of lies. Our eye color is a lie. Our hair length is a lie. Breast augmentation lies. Hair color lies. Credit lies. <laughs> Credit makes you think you got money when you don't. <laughs> we lie. This culture is full of lies. And sometimes we have so many lies till you wonder where the truth really lies. Where is the truth? because there's so many lies in our world. And so it's difficult. The, the only way to really know the truth is to begin a relationship with God because Lord knows we can't trust each other. I think the writer said it's a hard life for a pimp. And part of the reason, part of the reason it's a hard life for a pimp is because he can't trust nobody. 
The fact is, it's just a hard life. <laughs> Trust is hard to come by. Truth is hard to come by. <laughs> because, yeah, if you appear for everybody say they love you, but they don't. <laughs> and so sometimes the devil sets us all up to believe yep. the lie. And it's a hard life. And so the truth becomes so important. A connection with God brings us truth. A connection with God brings us assurance. It brings us a deeper sense of self that carries us past the psychosis and the depression yeah. that often yeah. leads us in our lives. Why we turn on our television set and recognize that so many people are depressed. We're depressed because we're looking for something that we haven't connected with. And what we need to be connected with is that of God. Not only that, look at the truth. I just want you to see what the truth does. The truth, it says, and you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. And so uh, this connection with God brings truth, but the connection with the truth brings freedom. Yes. And all of us need that sense of freedom because I tell you, it's nothing like being a cage bird. My Angelo said, I know why the cage bird sings. There has to be a hope that at some point in time that you either get out the cage or get a better cage. Yeah. And that seems to be the way that we're living our lives, and just waiting in these cages that we created for ourselves. So many of us are in debt. So many of us are in uh, relationship depravity. So many of us find ourselves sick and illnesses because we eat the wrong things. We spend life in the wrong places. And it seems that oftentimes we find ourselves struggling to truly be free. And what we do is we often try to find something either to make us feel like we're free or to forget we're not free. All right. And so we drink and we do all different kinds of drugs and things of that nature in order to just forget. But the fact is, if you finally wake up, you will recognize that you need the truth. Sometimes the truth hurts and sometimes the truth takes you to the valley. Sometimes the truth will bring you to a place whereby you can identify with the sufferings of Christ. Because the truth often lets you know when you look in the mirror that somebody lied, you truly have not lost any weight at all. <laughs> somebody has lied to you. When we start to look at ourselves in the mirror, we begin to realize that we've been believing a lie. And it is not until you believe the truth that you're able to walk forward. It is not until you finally embrace the fact that you are not perfect. When you finally embrace the fact that life sometimes is not all that in a bag of chips and you certainly are not that. All of us then begin to look at ourselves and realize that I have a reason now to fall at the foot of the cross. See, before we believe the truth, we walk in our pride. And we say to God, I don't need you. But when we become honest with ourselves and recognize the mess that we are, yes. then we're finally pliable, we're finally fertile, we're finally accepting, we're finally ready. And every now and then, Brother Marshall, we realize that life is a life that demands the spade of sorrow to sometimes dig a well of joy. Yes. Sometimes you must dig deep. The deeper you dig, the better the well. Some people don't understand that in town because you turn on your tap and water comes. But I noticed with Brother Sandra's mother, Aunt Bernie, she just shake her head because she know. That if you live out in rural areas and you don't have water, you have to dig a well. And when you dig, sometimes you've got to dig even deeper than the folk next door. And you've got to keep on digging deep until finally you get a well. And sometimes they'll dig deep and they'll hit water. But that well is only going to give water for a short time. The deeper the well is dug, the, the, more, the more the water comes forward for a longer period of time. And then in time, the water is actually richer and sweeter and better and tastier and cooler. But still, one must dig deep to get that well. Sometimes in our lives, 
It takes a lot of digging. There's a lot of dirt that has to be uh, moved away in order to get what God wants from us. And so, you know, there are times when the truth will hurt. But thank God that the truth will bring you freedom. Look at verses 34 through 35. And Jesus answered them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Whosoever committed sin in is the servant of sin. And the servant abideth not in the house forever, but the son abideth forever. If the son therefore shall make you free, ye shall be free indeed. The benefits of discipleship is that it rejects a false self-awareness. It rejects a false sense of self-awareness. See, there's nothing worse than being a slave and not knowing it. That'll get you beat. Walk in your master's house and don't know you're a slave. <laughs> Forget your place, boy. What happens? You get a whooping. A false sense of self can, can bother us. And you know what? Many of us are dealing with a false sense of self right now. That's why some of us can't keep a job. Because you don't know you're not the boss. When you realize that you're not the boss, then you realize that you have a place to keep. But if you walk in thinking you're the boss, tell him what time you're showing up. Oh, I don't do that. That's not a part of my job description. Some people keep up with those job descriptions all the time. Let me tell you something. In America today, keep up with that job description and eventually you'll be holding it at home. Because now, people are having to do the job of two people. Come on, I know y'all know I'm right. Your supervisor been to your desk five times this month and increased your workload. And for you to turn around and tell them, oh, I, I don't do that. What you're really saying is, I don't want a job. There's a, there's a sense of self that we need to know. There's something about ourselves we need to know. And that is we need to know our place in life. Yes. And when we begin to realize whether we're free or slave, that will allow us to understand the mode in which we need to live. And so he says here, you know, you will know whether you a slave to sin or not. This is why the truth is so important. Because to be a slave and think you're free, that means that you'll never achieve freedom because you'll never know you need it. But for those who understand that they are slaves, then they work hard at being free. Each and every one of us have some things that enslaves us. And when we wake up and finally be honest, if nothing else, to yourself, to realize that you need freedom, then and only then will we recognize the connection with God that we truly need. That we need to be free. That we need salvation. That we need Him to come and be with us in the truth of salvation. But then verse 36 says this. If the Son therefore shall make you free, you shall be free indeed. And so you know what? When you have the benefits of discipleship, you recognize that training is available. You reject a false sense of self, but then you know that the Son is activated on your behalf. Because in 36, it says, If the Son, therefore, shall make you free, ye shall be free indeed. If the Son, therefore, shall make you free. If the Son has been activated in your life, then you're free for real. He's activated. The Son is activated. You've got to be uh, my age to really understand this thing because on Saturday morning, I'm going to tell you, Brother O'Brien, uh, I don't know y'all little cartoons. I, I see the little cartoons, y'all. But we had some cartoons. Our cartoons came on on Saturday morning. That was before the Cartoon Network. This was back in the days where the television actually cut off at night. Believe it or not, Brother Michaela Saunders, television wasn't 24 hours a day. Sometime around midnight, the TV cut off. All of a sudden, they played the Star Spangled Banner, and you lay there and look at the flag waving, and before you know it, it went to a little Indian head and a little circle, and then before you know it, it went to nothing but static. 
There was no TV until again in the morning when the news came on. So there was a time when we didn't have 24-hour TV. There was no uh, cable. You had to watch all of the commercials. There was a time when that television didn't play cartoons every day. That television only played cartoons on Saturday morning. And on Saturday morning when your parents were doing the house cleaning, if you had uh, been uh, well behaved for the week, you got to watch cartoons, Brother Jay Sean, on Saturday morning. And on Saturday morning, there was all kinds of cartoons that would come on. We enjoyed Batman and Superman and Spider-Man. I enjoyed Bugs Bunny and the Pink Panther and other kinds of cartoons. But you know, there was a couple of purple monkeys that believed belonged to the Justice League. These purple monkeys were called the Wonder Twins. And the Wonder Twins would come on on Saturday morning and, and the Wonder Twins would, uh, uh, they would just act like monkeys ordinarily. And they didn't seem like they had a superpower because you know Superman, he could fly. And Captain America had his shield. And Batman had his tube belt. Everybody had something but these Wonder Twins, these monkeys, what could they do? Well, when there was trouble, they would fist bump. And all of a sudden, Brother Robin, they would say, Wonder Twins, activate. And when they got together, it was amazing what they could do to a villain and a bad guy. But I'm here to tell you right now, there's a benefit in being a disciple. And that is that we are able to connect with him. I think the text says it this way, where two or three are gathered together in my name, there am I in the midst. And so all I need is God the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit together with me. And the wonder twins began to activate when God is in the midst, when God is in our presence and activated for us, then we are free and free indeed. I have confidence in this. I know that Jesus has died for me and that he shall return again. No matter what happens, of Jesus Christ. He's always activated on your behalf. Amen. Amen. Liberty Hill, living the Bible together through education, missions, and ministry.